Hi, welcome back. I'm Mrs. Baranek, and this is video four of my series for AP World History answering the question, how did we get here? Covering material that's significant to your understanding of the course, but that's no longer covered since we became AP World History Modern. In the first three videos, we covered advances in human history from the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age through the Neolithic or New Stone Age, which covered the rise of ancient urban civilizations. Today, we're moving into the Classical Era. The Classical Era covers approximately 600 BCE to 600 CE. This is a time period where societies, as always, are becoming increasingly complex in all of the pieces of society. Honestly, I could teach a year-long course on just this time period, but because we're trying to build some historical context for you, I'm going to try to stick to just the highlights of each civilization. Wish me luck. One of the major themes of this time period is the rise of empires. An empire exists when one group of people has conquered another and incorporated their lands into a single kingdom. The first actual empire dates from to about 2350 BCE when Sargon of Akkad conquered large parts of Mesopotamia, putting all of the warring city-states who up until that time had been independent under his control. So the concept of empire wasn't new during the Classical Era, as empires grew to huge sizes. Additionally, trade really intensified during this time period. Compare the map in the upper right-hand corner to the one from when we first discussed ancient urban civilizations. This is when the famous Silk Road, or a series of trade routes, really began. Chinese goods from the Classical Era have been found as far as the Roman Empire and vice versa. Our second map is from the beloved AP World History resource Freemanpedia. Link in the notes. You can see some of the major empires of this time. We'll talk about India, China, Persia, Greece, Rome, Mesoamerica, and South America, but not in that order. And that's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. The Persian Empire existed for about 220 years and started with the Achaemenid dynasty founded by Cyrus the Great. They conquered lands from Egypt and the Balkans, which is in Southeast Europe, to India. It was the biggest empire of its day and became the model that future empires would follow. So I'm going to spend a little more time on the Persians than some of the other empires. You might remember that at their height, most Mesopotamian cities had 40 to 60,000 people. The Persian Empire in total had 35 to 50 million, so way bigger. In order to rule this huge territory, they needed an effective bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is a government that has a ton of people working for it, they're usually divided up into departments to deal with different parts of governing. That way, there isn't one person who has to oversee everything, which would be way too much. Most modern governments today have enormous bureaucracies. Another way that the Persians handled the size of their empire was to break it up into 23 provinces called satrapies, which you can see on the smaller map in the bottom right. Each satrapy was run by a satrap who was like a governor. This satrap answered to the emperor. As the Persians conquered, they frequently used local leaders to administer the satrapies. That way they felt less like an occupying power. But to make sure that the satrap was loyal, there was also a group of imperial spies spread throughout the empire. The Persians were also incredibly religiously tolerant. The Persians were Zoroastrians. Zoroastrians followed the teachings of a prophet, Zarathustra, who you can see in the top right corner. The basics of this religion are that there are two powers, the deity Ahura Mazda and an evil force Ahriman. These two supernatural figures are battling for the world. Men can choose to follow the path of good, Ahura Mazda, or the path of evil, Ahriman. Zoroastrians show who they support by how they live. But Zoroastrians also believe that the gods of other people could aid Ahura Mazda and be on his side. This led the Persians to be a pretty good group to be conquered by. See that clay cylinder in the middle of the screen? That's the Cyrus Cylinder. A copy of it sits in the United Nations building because it's the world's first declaration of human rights. When Cyrus conquered the Babylonians in Mesopotamia, he told them that they would be protected from harm, and then he went into their temple and praised their god. There was also a group of Jews who had been forced to live in Babylon when they had been conquered 50 years earlier, and Cyrus had a dream that their god was on the side of Ahura Mazda, so he gave them a bunch of gold and sent them home to rebuild their temple and worship their god. That's why Cyrus's name appears more than 20 times in the Torah, the holy book of the Jews. Local religions, laws, and customs were all okay by the Persians, as long as people paid their taxes, which were fair and collected at regular intervals so people didn't get surprises, and provided military service. Another feature of the Persian Empire that I have to point out is the Royal Road, which you can see on the biggest map in red. 
This was a 1700 mile road that connected some of the major cities of the empire. It was used to improve trade, but also to move troops quickly when necessary. And along this road was a series of rest stops where messengers working for the king could stop, switch horses, and keep going. This meant that important royal decrees could spread quickly. Eventually, this royal road became part of the Silk Road, that major trade route that I mentioned earlier. Another innovation from the Persians was a type of irrigation called canats. That's Q-A-N-A-T. These brought water from underground up into the field, and it completely revitalized the Middle East. The Persians were also known for introducing new crops to places where they knew that they would grow well. All in all, the Persians were pretty amazing. The one place they never managed to conquer, though, was Greece. And eventually, the same guy who conquered Greece conquered them. So in the next video, we'll talk about the Greeks. Bye!